guys, welcome to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about some of the typical behaviors and patterns I've seen in relationships when someone has suffered an abandonment wound. Watch this video. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If you're new, please click the little subscribe button and the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you've been with me for a while, thank you so much and welcome back. Let's just jump in here. I just got off a call with a client and I was like, you know, I gotta talk about this stuff. I gotta talk about it more. You guys have probably watched some other of my videos about abandonment and highly sensitive people and all of that. But today I just wanna go into some specifics about patterns and triggers and things that are so common to most people I've ever seen who have struggled with abandonment wounds, whether they're healed or unhealed or somewhere in between, these triggers still come up. So let's let's talk about it. So number one, this one foot in, one foot out mentality, it is very uncomfortable for someone who's had abandonment wounds from a parent or someone they've looked up to in their developmental years. It is very hard for that person to feel super comfortable being totally connected to or totally abandoned in a relationship. It's actually more comfortable for that person to be one foot in and one foot out or make things uncertain all the time. If this is you, maybe you cause drama for more for no reason. Maybe you start to feel uncomfortable when it's too close and you don't realize that that's what's happening, so you start to have frustration to create distance. Maybe you don't think that you really deserve that closeness because it doesn't feel safe and it's not certain and it's definitely not familiar, so you get afraid of that uncertain feeling. Maybe you don't trust yourself in the relationship or you don't trust the other person because, like I said, you've never felt that secure attachment. So the other thing with abandonment is that we haven't had a securely attached bond. That can bring up you know, relationship addiction issues. It can bring up... Um, a lot of fear in relationships. It can bring up a lot of indecision, indecisiveness when it comes to relationship. It can bring up commitment issues. Sometimes people who've had abandonment wounds will either jump into a commitment right away or, you know, avoid it like the plague. So it does go in both ways because trauma is expressed in extreme opposites. So either you're one of those people probably that's like, I'm going to marry you to everybody that you meet, or um, we can be together, but I'm not into marriage. I've seen both. You know who you are. And neither one is wrong. It just means you might want to look at the trauma behind that, what the intention is, why it's not comfortable to be committed, or why it's not comfortable to not be committed. So that's one of the things that, or a few of the things that I really see. Also, when there's abandonment wounds, there's a lot of guilt because if we were abandoned, a big part of our inner child thinks that we are the reason. We are the reason that we were abandoned, so I must continue to do things to make people leave me so that my original story is correct. What's the original story? The original story is there's something wrong with me, which is why I got abandoned. Which, by the way, I've said this in other videos, the reason you were abandoned had nothing to ever do with you. If you're in my shadow work course, by the way, you know all about this because we go into the mother wound and the mother's wounding, the father wound and the father's wounding. The tribal wounds run deep in our families, whether we know it or not. What's a tribal wound? Just as review. A tribal wound is something that you went through, your mom or dad went through, their mom or dad. It's a ripple effect and it never got healed, which is why you are still being treated the way that the unhealed parent knows how to treat you. So our work is to heal that so that we don't continue that in our relationships and in our families. So the guilt part, oh gosh, I feel so guilty. I must have done something wrong. That's why I get abandoned. That person cheated on me. It must be because of me. I'm not enough. All this self-blame because of guilt is wrong. We got to get rid of it. And one way that we can get rid of it is looking at what does guilt say? Guilt says I did something wrong. Great. So I want you to look at what you possibly could have done wrong to make that person react the way that they did. And by the way, we can't make people react the way that they are going to. They're going to do them regardless of you. And this is a good way to double check that. Do a role play. If I were that person and things happened to me, how would I react? Would I ever be able to do that to someone like they did to me? 
10 times out of 10 when I ask any client that, I say, really? Your husband cheated on you multiple times because why? You didn't make his food right, you didn't, okay. So let's pretend that he's making your food wrong. Would you go cheat on him? The client will say, of course not, I could never do that. Okay, then that's his character. It's not his reaction to you because of you, it's his reaction to you because of his wounding. So we have to be able to give it back. That toxic shame that we carry of something's happening because of me, people are rejecting me because of me, um, the negative feelings I have inside are because of me. Oftentimes when we have an emotionally immature parent, we're raised thinking that everything that they do that's unloving towards us is because of us. So then we start doing that to ourselves to maintain that original story that mom or dad was right, I do deserve to be abandoned. That was never the truth. That's what they made you think so that they didn't have to take responsibility for their own behavior. Think about that. So if the truth is I'm not doing anything wrong, but I'm being abandoned, what would the mind think? The mind would think, well, there must be something wrong with me that I don't know about then. Then it goes into shame. But what the heart knows is there is nothing wrong with you and you're not doing anything wrong if someone's abandoning you. Someone's abandoning you because they don't know how to face hard things and they don't know how to say what they really want. So they must leave you rather than talk it through or tell you the truth of what's really going on. There is no reason to ever abandon anyone. If we need to leave someone, we need to be mature about it and say, I'm going to leave because this isn't working for me. My needs aren't being fulfilled. I don't expect you to fulfill them, but the ones that I have aren't being met and I don't think they ever will be and we're probably not compatible. That would be the mature thing so there's not a trauma. Instead, there's just sadness because something's ending so we can get over that. We don't have emotional overwhelm and overload because it's not traumatic. It's just sad. Totally two different things. So often people who are abandoned have emotional overwhelm because there was never anyone there to walk them through the experience because they were probably blamed for that experience, but also because their parents didn't know how to have resolve or they wouldn't abandon. Resolve is I'm not happy with your behavior. I'm not going to talk to you for a little bit because I need some time to calm down. But instead of doing that, what most parents do is they punish, emotionally immature parents I mean, they punish and they ignore you or they leave you alone, or they make you uncertain of their love. So, instead, what we need to see is there needs to be resolve. So, when we're dealing with that guilt feeling, it's really about asking yourself, if I never did anything wrong to create the original abandonment wound, then what did happen? Why did it happen? See, here's the thing. These questions get to really incredible answers, but we are afraid to ask the questions because we never second guess mom or dad, who we see as God, until we realize there's a father, mother, God, source, universe, whatever you want to call it. Our mom and dad are just wounded humans, right? So when we start to really look at our mother wound and our mother's wounds, our father wound and our father's wounds, we can start to say, okay, since I see their wounds, I think the reason they might have abandoned me has nothing to do with me. It probably has to do with other people who abandoned them, and that's all they knew because that's what they had mirrored, and that's what they had exemplified, and they didn't do their inner work, which is fine. Um, you know. So now I have to deal with that. Instead of, I'm going to take it on as part of my identity that I deserve to be abandoned because I'm not worthy of the things that I desire, and I'm not worthy of the things that I love and I'm not worthy of things that I need. That's all lies. We're all worthy of everything that we need, desire, and enjoy. But here's the thing. So if we really look at that, we say, if I never did anything wrong and I was abandoned, that's a very scary, scary place to live in because that equals powerlessness, right? I am powerless, which creates anger, which sometimes creates rage. So how do you take your power back from understanding that there was nothing I could have possibly done differently to not get abandoned as a child. There's nothing I could have done to um, prevent this pain. There is nothing. And if that's the truth, then we have to lift up to a higher understanding of if everything works for me and it's happening for me, not to me, then what could this be showing me in my bigger purpose? What I took my abandonment wounds to, to mean as my um, healing was beginning 
and in the middle of my healing is I started realizing that if I wasn't abandoned by a parent, I would have never found my personal relationship with God. I would have probably never found my deep trust and surrender in the spiritual realm and my understanding and wisdom of it because I would have never been forced to go into that. I had to check everything out and I wouldn't have had to check that out if I didn't have that pain that then became my purpose, right? So this is the thing. It's not that the universe wants you to be in pain to find your purpose, but ultimately we need contrast to look a different direction or to lift up into a new perspective. So abandonment wounds, I always say, are some of the hardest things to deal with because you feel lost in space, you feel uncertain identity, you feel confused, by the way, and all of these things play out in our relationships. So really think about it. Have you been a self-sabotager? Have you been a self-sacrificer? Have you been a people pleaser? The self-sabotagers are usually the ones that were abandoned. Why? Because we're afraid they're going to leave us, so we'll reject and leave you first. I'm going to look for anything that I can possibly find wrong so that if I don't get blindsided, I'll just see it wrong and I'll leave, which most of the time are extreme things that aren't really going to hurt you in the long run anyway, but we're just self-protecting because we think if someone else abandons us and that means the original wound is true, that I deserve to be abandoned and I don't desire, I don't deserve what I desire. But the truth is, if you really walk this walk consciously and you allow yourself to sit in a position of possible abandonment without you creating it, you know who you are, (laughs) and they abandon you even though you did nothing to create that, what you'll start to see is the original experience was very much like this one. You did nothing to create it, it just happened. Why? Because that person probably has a wound. Mom or dad had the wound. It wasn't you, but you got wounded because they projected it onto you. Partners do that a lot. Partners will say, you're the reason I'm leaving. No. If I had a behavior in action, which a lot of abandonment abandoned people do because they want to self-sabotage or they want to abandon before they can be, get abandoned, that's one story. But usually, if you can become really aware of the fact that this is your trigger, this isn't reality, I don't have to leave this person, I'm seeing through the veil of abandonment, not through the veil of truth, let me double check it, let me perception check, is this person really dangerous, is this person really that bad, is this person really threatening and scary? Probably not, it's just your wounding. And if that's the truth, you know what you get to say to your partner? Excuse me, this was me in the past by the way. Excuse me, I'm about to do um, a sabotage thing and I don't wanna do it, but I'm really afraid of our love. How powerful is that? I've done that in the past. And that's really how I healed that wound was coming straight into it, facing it and saying, I'm about to do something I don't want to do. Please don't let me do that. Please make me feel safe in the relationship, secure attachment. Please love me even though I'm showing you my flaw. When we can do that in relationships, we are one step further to healing this abandonment wound. If we can share with our partner vulnerably, hey, I have abandonment wounds. Sometimes it makes me do this. Sometimes it makes me see things a little bit inaccurately. Sometimes it gives me a filter on a like. Sometimes this is what happens. These are my triggers. If you can get self-aware and share that with your partner, if it's the right partner, instead of telling yourself, I shouldn't have these wounds, they should be gone, time to radically accept the fact that you do. And it doesn't mean that that's wrong and you're behind in the game or you're flawed or you're going to mess things up. It means that's your curriculum for this lifetime. And because that is your curriculum, curriculum, we must radically accept that you have abandonment wounds. And once you can radically accept that you have abandonment wounds, you can then share it with a partner who's going to radically accept you back and say, yeah, I see that and that's something I can deal with. If not, not the right person. If so, could be your healing partner. It's all about having a partner who's open to the truth of who you are, but you have to be open to the truth of who you are first. You have to love the fact that you have these wounds. You need to not be in love with them, but you have to love yourself anyway. And then you start to be with people who love you too because you're so radically open. You're unapologetic about your wounding. You're not identifying with it, but you're accepting it. So I hope this video finds you well. Please share with one person you think that it could help. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please check the links below as both my courses, Emotional Rehab, which will help you big time with abandonment wounds, and Shadow Work, which also helps big time with abandonment wounds, are open for enrollment right now, the month of September. We start October 1st. Please get on that early enrollment so you get the discount. I adore you guys. Please check me out on Instagram. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me and I'll get back to you soon. Adore you and see you soon. Have a great week.